Hello, everyone. We have Josh again in the house. Last week, we had him share with us about how did he find out his passion, turn it to become a career. Uh, so I believe that each of us loves to do something that we are enjoying. And at the same time, we uh, feel like it's challenging us and it contributes something to society or people around us. And uh, I have Josh because I knew Marcus. Can I pronounce Josh, it correctly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I remember how did you guys meet each other? It was a very, very interesting story. Could you remind me about it? Yeah, Charles, uh, it was at a Toastmasters uh, event, oh, and I was I was a speaker, and when I got into the room early, Charles was uh, one of the first people in the room, and I asked him to help me with the beginning of my speech. I, I, I had an idea, and I asked if he'd help, and he said yes, and in the beginning of my speech, I start with a story about my, my own fear of heights. But I started it by saying to the audience, are you afraid of the dark? That was my opening line. And so I arranged for that when I said that, I paused. And then the lights in the room went out. And, and, and everyone in the room was murmur, murmur went through. And then the lights came on about three seconds later. Now, Char I arranged for Charles to do, the, to do the lights for me. And I just chatted with him at the beginning of the presentation and he, and he agreed to help and he did it right on cue. And it was a fabulous open because when the lights came back on, I had everyone's attention. <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay, so it's the demo. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, this is amazing and I'd love to hear that again because I remember also in uh, speaking club Toastmaster in Ho Chi Minh City and a friend talked about uh, what happened if electric city up and then there was the person without even talking in advance to the speaker helped her to turn off the light and it made the people pay attention because the environment changed so sudden it triggered us and uh, actually last time when we had a conversation online the electricity went off oh <laughs> so today that's why we have another chance I, okay, I remember you was not a speaker or a trainer and you was a manager so can you share with us what was that one experience or maybe a process that you realized, oh, I wanted to do this career? Well, there was one major point, but it was a, it was a process. It was a matter of steps okay. to get there. As part of my job as a manager in a large cor corporation, I had to you know attend meetings and deliver presentations. Mm -hmm. And I, I signed up for a workshop, a two-day workshop on presentation skills. And I got my boss's permission. He said, ah, you don't, need, you don't need to take this. You're good enough already. And I thought, yeah, I'm pretty good, but I'll go. I'll take the course. Maybe I'll learn something. <laughs> well, I went to the course and I had that attitude when I, when I arrived. In fact, uh, for the first uh, five minutes, I was reading the newspaper. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I, I was. Anyone I was, reading the newspaper now? <laughs> but I put the newspaper down. And at the end of two days, I came away from that workshop and I, I was just amazed. And there were two big ahas that, that I had from that workshop. And the first one was that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. No. <laughs> uh, and the second aha was that it wasn't talent, it was skills. They were techniques that could be learned. You could learn to be a better presenter. And that intrigued me and I, and I wanted to do more. So I volunteered to do more presentations. And then I volunteered to be the chairperson for our conference, our association conference. And at that conference, I, you know, I, I got to 
uh, book speakers, talked to the speakers, and I spoke at the conference, welcomed people, told them where the washrooms are, what time lunch is. And I came away from that two-day conference. That was the trigger moment. That was the moment that I, I knew I, I wanted to be a speaker. I wanted to do that. And I went back to those people who gave me the workshop, who I took the workshop from, and I had become friends with them. And I said, I want to do this for a living. <laughs> and, and they gave me four pieces of advice that I followed. The first wow. one was, first one was, don't quit your day job just yet. No. Oh, don't just quit. Hold, hold on, hold on. Like, Go ahead. Wow. That's one is like going to be the next one, because otherwise, I, I really wanted to recall all the things that you share to kind of like add a chunk of information before getting to that very practical step of four steps. Uh, so last time I heard that, I said, wow. And we didn't have a chance to discuss, but for sure we will do. Uh, so could you, we go back a bit to go ahead. kind of like yeah. clarify the process of identifying what we want to do and really commit to make it happen before going to talk about why. A house. Or... So you said you was a manager and you was very very good at presenting. And uh, I believe there's a lot of lot of us when we are doing something for long enough, we were like, yeah, you know, I kind of like have that competence. So how did you decide to really take on the cost? Let's say for us we doing what we're doing and we say oh maybe we could do it well how can we have that kind of decision okay we're gonna need to level up what we do we need to go to the course or we need to meet that person we need to learn this technique how can we kind of like break out of our comfort zone and then say okay we're gonna level it up um you're right i wasn't a I wasn't a natural born speaker. I thought I was good enough. Turns out I wasn't. And when I got interested, now when I got interested, I wasn't ready to change my career. I just wanted to speak more. And so I okay. volunteered to speak more. And each time I, and, and, and you know, I was so-so, I wasn't that great, but each time I would do it, I would learn from it. And so it doesn't have to be a big splash. It's just little steps that you take to get, get there. And I would prod myself and I would, uh, I would volunteer to do a presentation. And then I would volunteer to do more at work and do more for my association and even speaking to, uh, uh, to schools. In fact, uh, uh, one of the scariest presentations I did very early on was to my son's grade four class. Uh, a group of grade four, grade four students, so they'd be about uh, uh, nine, nine or ten years old. Uh, you know, that was scary <laughs> to speak to them, and and I did it. It wasn't great, but I learned. I learned from it along the way. And and you know, people don't know what's going on inside your head. Uh, we you know we criticize ourselves, but we get better. And, and so don't think that your passion is something that you are just perfect at. No, it's what interests you. It's what intrigues you. What are you willing to get better at? What are you willing to embarrass yourself doing? Because in the, in sometimes you embarrass yourself and that's okay as long as you want to get better at it. Mm, lovely. That's interesting. So uh, I kind of like try to go deeper. Uh, let's say some of us, doing what we are doing right now and uh, maybe some of us have the position as you a manager and which means that it's quite a very good right let's say we work over the years and then we get that position that promotion and now some people probably call like a golden day where everything quite comfortable and uh you have this respect from people hopefully and then you also have a good salary so how could people challenge themselves to say like okay i gonna need to learn and be different we had a, like one and a half day training with managers from very big bank in vietnam 
and uh, they all are middle managers, right? And the question is like, if the company doesn't force them to learn, how can they actually proactively learn? As you said, after you define, oh, I want to be better at speaking, and then you start going around and learn about it and practice on that. So what, what is the habit to help people to say like, once a while, I gotta need to develop myself. Can you have this kind of way for us to motivate us to do that? You, yeah, well, the, the company can't force you to learn. They, they, can, <laughs> they, they can force you to do, uh, to do your work in a to certain go. way. It's gotta come from within. You've, you've gotta want mm -hmm. to learn. Uh, and, and not everybody does, and, and that's fine. Uh, but what is it that you want to be better at? And you know, it, when you look at something, when you experience, and and you have to try new experiences. I I push myself to do uh, to do presentations. I also push myself to learn how to write to be a better writer. And and those were in, in writing. Uh, I didn't want to be a writer, but hey, I've now written a best-selling book and I've written over published over five hundred articles. But in the beginning, that's not what I wanted to do. But when I learned how to do it. I enjoyed, I, I didn't enjoy writing. I enjoyed have finished the right, finishing the writing. So I, again, I learned by, by pushing, by experimenting. So you have to experiment, you have to try and, and nothing is gonna be perfect the first time, second time or fifth time. But if it, if it interests you, if it excites you and you think, you know, I could get better at this and I, and I kind of like it. And maybe you'll like it a lot more, but it's got ah. to. It doesn't start. It's not a magic wand. It it steps along the way. Lovely. So it's kind of like compound effect, and it's kind of like step one step at a time, and then the big picture get clearer as you be better. So you said we have to identify what is that one thing we want to be better at, and um, the question is how can you define that one thing, right? Because Maybe you get to the period where you experience quite a lot of challenges and you kind of like know now what you want. So let's say for younger generation, like 20 or 30, they say, okay, what is that one thing that I want to be better? Because I seem to be like liking better everything. So what is your thought on that? Um you, yeah, and that's always a challenge because <laughs> what, what if you like many things, many activities, and you're kind of good at many things or several things, how do you pick one thing? And pick one thing that is your top priority and then set your priorities for the other activities. And mm -hmm. so, so for example, for me, um, speaking is, is, was my top priority writing was a, a priority, but not as high as speaking. It was another priority. So there are some things, your top priority where if you, if you could only do one thing in your day, what would that one thing be? That's mm. how you set your priorities. Mm. So priority and one of the ways to really know what is that priority is to say, what if I only have chance to do one thing? What is that one? And what if I spend my whole day today to do that thing and then I feel happy about it? Or maybe what if I do one thing in the next one year? So what is the criteria for you to decide the one thing, that priority? Is this your core values or what is that criteria? to define that one thing as a top priority? It's, it's, what, it's what you're willing to do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, you know it's the right thing for you to do because you're, you are willing to give up other things that you also value, but you value oh. this one thing, this one activity more. Because see, here's, um, my grandfather had a saying, uh, he said, he said, George, you can do anything in life, but you can't do everything. 
That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. You probably can do everything, but not as good as if you do less things. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. So when you say value, you mean value regarding your core values or value regarding what? Um, you, your, yeah, it's got to resonate with your core values. And it, it's a matter of what do you, what makes you tick? You know, what, what, what drives oh. you? Um, what, okay. what's important to you? And, and what do you want to, what do you want to accomplish with life? What, you know, if, um, if you, if you die tomorrow, what do you <laughs> want, you know, what do you want people? Oh, sorry, you're laughing that. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're all yeah. going to die. We're all going to die tomorrow. We just don't know what tomorrow it is. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you know, when you're when you're gone, what one thing do you want people to remember you for? That's great. Very very nice. So uh, there's a guy named Car 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 Kevin. He made the oh Stephen Kevin. He made the YouTube like ten rules. Yeah. He said there's a book like one word. What is your one word, right? What is that one word that you believe? And now it's just this, this is what is one word that you want people to remember about you, that you live every day. You breathe and live with that one word. So I'm curious, what is that one word from you? I can't like jump around. <laughs> what is that? What do um, you want people to remember? Well, it's funny. Um, I like to be remembered as being as someone who is curious oh uh, it, it's it's what drives me it's i'm curious about about people especially uh, okay. and so i'm curious i'm curious about nature uh science uh, i've always been but especially curious about people how we how we communicate how we connect uh how we make decisions uh i'm curious you know and, and, and how can I be better at it? And how can I help other people be better at how we communicate? That's what, that's what I'd like to be remembered. Uh, you know, they could write on my grave, George was curious. And I <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm laughing and thinking about, okay. So uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to kind of like learning more about that curiosity because last time I, Remember, you had a conversation that you set the mechanism to try down your passion or achieve what you want is to actually be curious. So could you share how did you develop that curiosity and how does it help you in your passion development? Yeah. I've been told by people who know me well that that I ask good questions, and in order to that ask is a great topic, and and in order to ask good questions, you need to be curious. In in fact, um, I I I hosted a radio show, which is one of the other activities, and one of the people I I who was guest on my radio show, he lived next when he was a child. He lived next door to Albert Einstein, and Albert Einstein would come over. The real one. The real Albert Einstein. Yeah, he'd come <laughs> over and, and he'd talk to this boy in his backyard and the boy would be playing in the sandbox and, and Albert Einstein would ask him questions about the sand. Uh, it's, and, and, and I remember it would be like, if you were going to make a sand castle, how would you make it stick together? And so Albert Einstein would pose these incredible questions to a child that a child can understand, but it made him think. And I remember when I interviewed this man, what he learned most from Albert Einstein was to ask questions, to be curious. And somewhere that's part of me. I, I, that was in me already, being curious. And then I learned how to ask better questions and listen better and of, of the world and myself. You have to ask questions of yourself. That's the most important person you've got to ask questions to. So when I, when I go for my run or my walk, I talk to myself. I ask myself questions. What was that? What, what question or yeah. all, um, all kinds of questions. Um, what are the top like, three questions that you often ask yourself? 
Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, there's, there's, let me see. There's a, there's a lot of questions I ask myself. It depends on what challenges I'm facing. Uh, one of the questions is, okay, uh, at this time, um, as the world is changing, how am I going to adapt to, to the new normal? whatever that's going to look like. Uh, that's certainly a big question on my mind for the past few months. Um, that's a big question. Uh, and, you know, another question is just how can I get better? Um, how can I get better at, uh, uh, at speaking, at writing, at conversation? Um, always just looking for what's the little thing I can do better today? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, as you said, depends on where we are at and maybe we will reflect with different questions. But that self-talk is so important, right? It could trigger our answers and then our action later on. Uh, so uh, could you share, like, how did you develop that asking better question? And I think we can have the whole interview about that because this is like a topic that more and more people are curious about because Okay, everyone know, okay, if we can ask good question, we have better answer. And uh, now is how can we define better question? Um, how did I develop questions that I don't really know for sure. Um, I think part of it, I, I learned to challenge authority. Uh, and when I was a child in, in um, you know, in, in, in school, I would I would challenge. I would ask the teacher uh, questions, um, and if I thought the teacher was wrong, I would tell him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to do? I mean, you, you can only you can only hit me so many times, um, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. So I, I was never afraid to ask questions of authority, and therefore. Um, I should be able to ask questions of myself, and and that's the toughest one because we we is, we we make too many assumptions, and and so that we yeah. we can't see the assumptions, and 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 we need to go back to examining ourselves, and and ask simple questions, simple questions like uh, who am I, um, you know what. What am I good at? Why should people Why should people work with me? Who can I help? How can I best help them? What's you know What's the purpose? What's the best use of my life? So those are questions uh, that that I ask, and I, I think most of us should ask. Mm -hmm. Wow, we get a uh, like a different interesting topic that maybe we we go back a bit to the passion one. Right? The question one maybe we have a whole another. <laughs> so we were at the moment when you said that you were a manager and then you went to a training and then you found that you you could be better at speaking and you started developing it and you eventually wanted to make it become a career and then the people did the training which maybe we call like trainers so you fought it so now we're talking about, okay, you define what you want. That is the thing that you want to be better. And that is the thing that you priority. And then you want to do it in the long run. And now it's a passion. That's it. So how can you like, turn that kind of passion in the feeling and then become a career? And you talk about four things. How did you apply that later on? Well, in, 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 in passion is only good if it makes you do something if you have passion but you do nothing with it you know you're wasting the energy so you have to use it so for me once i realized once i discovered that i love speaking to an audience that i wanted to do this for a business for my career uh, I, I i got the advice and the four the four steps they told me to do one was don't quit your day job just yet and, and that takes passion because that means you have to work all day and then work on your dream when you're not at work. So, you know, for me, it was evenings, weekends, holidays, vacation. So that takes passion. That's where the passion comes in because it makes you do things when you want to rest. But no, passion <laughs> keeps you going. Yeah, so, do it as a way to rest. 
Yeah, you and, and you know, and, and you work till you know, you, you come home at, at five or six o'clock and then you work till 11 o'clock at night, you know, working on your your passion. So that's what the passion does. So so they said, don't quit your day job yet, just yet. The second second step they told me was to join Toastmasters so you get better at public speaking, which, which was very helpful. And and I re, and I remember going to Toastmasters, which was interesting. And the the first meeting and there was about 12 people there and a few people spoke and i at the end of the meeting i thought i'm better than all these people what am i going to learn here but you know what it's not about whether you think you are better it's what might you learn from people so even if you think you are good you can still learn from people who aren't as good as you because you learn from their perceptions and 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 their insight. So that was very helpful. So Toastmasters was the second step. Then the third step they said was speak, volunteer to speak to any group of people anywhere. So I spoke to, spoke to Toastmasters, I spoke to Rotary, spoke to uh, kids in the class, uh, spoke at association, just to get practice, just to get, and again, that takes passion because you're putting in all that extra time, all that extra hours one to get get the booking and then two to do it and in the in the fourth piece of advice was at some point in time start to focus on one or two maybe three but one or two topics that you get good at so you become known as an expert because an expert speaker gets paid a speaker who speaks on anything speaks for free forever <laughs> Wow. And I followed that advice and, and it worked it, and it took time. It took How time. How long? How long was that? Um, I started my business. I started working on the business part time uh, from the point of when I had that conversation of I want to be, I want to do this for a living to the point where I quit the job was eight years. Now I started part time. So for about two and a half years, I was working on the business part time, but it, it just took me eight years to get there. And again, it, it takes passion to work on something for that long. And yeah, it's like a, like a long, not marathon, but chilaton, uh, ultra marathon. <laughs> yeah, you said we're going to need to do the channel. Transition, right? Uh, so you said during that transition, let's uh, conceptualize it, right? You said first, you will still do what you do. And now you know, okay, that is the thing that I want to develop and want to become my main career. And I will spend like a certain amount of time and then every day working on that. So instead of maybe hanging around, I probably will passionately do it because I'm still too happy. And then, the, so which means we have that in the calendar as a part of the day. And as a second step is to join a community of people who actually learn about the essential skill to develop that career, right? Like in our case, maybe speaking, then we have this master or in some of the case, like writing can have like a writing group community, poem reading community. And for some people doing programming, maybe a WordPress community. And then the third one is like you said that uh, we gotta take a very like cool, let's say massive action to develop the super competence to so speak or do all the work can be like without paying and then develop that competence and that like network and will be the part right that is the interesting part the fourth one where you will kind of like okay now you're good and let's say you're great by choosing one thing to dig deep into that. Uh, so can you share that like, okay, you said because the passion, so we will work for the long run without even feeling tired. So have you experienced any kind of moment where you wanted to give up? Even you still know it's your passion, but then, yeah. And then how did you deal with that? Um. Let me see. I, I, there's been ups and downs uh, when, when, uh, especially when you, as an entrepreneur, any entrepreneur has ups and downs, highs and lows. Uh, so, 
there might be times when you might think you want to give up, but that feeling, it doesn't last forever. If, if it lasts, if it, if it lasts too long, then, then maybe you should, maybe it's not for you, but it's normal to have your, your, your passion go up and down. It's normal to have your confidence go up and down. That is normal. And so there are times when you might think, oh, this isn't working. Uh, maybe I should do something else. Um, and there will, unfortunately, there will always be people who, who will tell you that you can't do it. That, oh, how, you know, how could you do something? Why don't you just go get a job like, you know, like your parents did? Why don't you do the same thing that your parents did? And, you know, your parents will tell you that, you know, um, and, and the, there'll be people telling you that you can't, it can't be done. Don't worry about them. It's if you believe you can do it, uh, believe in yourself, but make sure you have to do more than believe. You have to do something positive. You have to move forward and you, and you have to look back every once in a while, you know, when you are feeling like maybe I should give up, maybe, that's when you need to look back at how far you've come, how much progress you made. You might say, oh, I had a bad week. I had a bad month. No, wait a minute. In the past two years or the past three years, how far have you come? Just look at the progress. And as long as you keep moving forward, then, then you know you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely or certainly, challenges gonna come, and there will be the days where maybe you say, "Oh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, why am I choosing this more difficult way?" And you gotta okay, look back and say, "Oh, we've gone so far." So I also resonate with that when I just started my writing and training industry of Korea, and then after only two years i started feeling oh kind of depressed in a way and i said oh, oh wow actually i found out what i love to do and i got this book done so the kind of like positive reinforcement as you said is just so crucial to say we have been in a journey let's give the momentum and momentum and then also you said about we believe right and then believe with the action to create the results very very important so you mentioned on that is the how to turn kind of like passion to become a career in the long run. And you talk about how can we keep momentum in that journey, overcome the challenges of someone who's going to give up. So what, what would be the, like, let's say, social circles that important to you when you already get to the kind of like now you become an expert in one or two areas. Do you think that all the networks of people around have to change and your habits have to change? Um, well, yeah, short answer is yes. Um, it, when, you become, when you become an expert or when you become exceptional at what you're doing, you start to meet a different different groups of people for for example when i started uh, when i first started learning how to speak i went to toastmasters and i and i met many toastmasters then once i was starting to get paid as a professional speaker i started to meet professional speakers and i would i would meet with them and i would learn from them and trade experiences and then and then when i wrote a book I started to meet other authors and we would have discussions and ideas. So as you move into these, these activities, it is important that you connect with other people uh, to learn from each other, to learn from each other and give each other support. There's, there's no question. You can't do it alone. You can't just be uh, alone. I mean, you can run your business on your own. You can, it's your activity it's going to make, but connect with other people because You'll learn from them, and and when when you are with people who you like and respect, and if they comp when they compliment you, ask them you know say thank you very much, but ask them this question: ask them what is it that you notice 
that is one of my strengths that I should keep using. Oh, that's so, interesting. You know, it, it and, and you know, and, and they might also criticize and say, you can get better at this, you can get better at that. But then also say, what is one of my strengths that maybe I've forgotten about that I should, that I should keep doing? And, and I just, this week, um, last week, I had a conversation with a friend who's a speaker who I've known for about 20 years. And he complimented me uh, on a, a webinar that I, I did online. He attended and he said, one of my strengths is that I, I tend to be precise with my words. And I'm, I'm glad that he noticed that. And he said, no, it's not just this week. I noticed it 20 years ago. <laughs> and I oh. thought, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Like, like that made me feel good. It made me feel good because I know I do put effort into being precise. Wow. To never stop like learning. And so you said that that network has to change. And the question is that like, we have good network. So let's say people started developing their passion and they have certain networks. And now when they level up, they have to really say, okay, what is next for me? And be surrounded with the people who, who already been in that journey before and they in the next level. So the question, maybe we have another topic talk about how can we you know, like live the good group, right? To, to really spend space with the network that now in alignment with what we do in this level. So my question would be, what would be your like top habits that you change when you started judging your speaking as a career? Top top habits that I changed? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And maybe before that, you can talk about the moment of when you decided, okay, now I'm going to, you know, start judging people because that's just, yeah. Um, hab habits both of thought and habits of, of action. So, for example, of thought, one of the habits is that I'm good at what I do. I offer value and I believe in the value and I'm charging for the value and people will get value from my help. I okay. might not be the best speaker in the world. That doesn't matter. I still offer value. And, and so you, and, and so it's that self um, self value, self thought, because yeah. as soon as you start to go sell, try to sell yourself out there, people will say, what, how much do you charge? Are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah. So self work, right? Uh, what was that process that you decided? Okay, now I'm gonna charge because you said that you went around and spoke free volunteer. So when did you decide that moment? Like let's say people start their businesses, right? At the beginning, they're the communities and they try to, you know, set up their name and they they don't really charge yet. And then they say, okay, now is the time to really say this is what i offer and this is the value of it regarding the finance so when did you have that kind of transition and what happened i i was lucky because i had i had some mentors that that i could go to for advice and they would encourage me to to grow and to george you should charge more how much are you charging? Zero. Well, you should charge more. And, and, and so, first of all, I had to convince myself. I had to keep reminding myself of the value. And then I had to be bold enough to say, well, here's my fee. And, and then, just, and then you, and then you, when you say, here's my fee, you shut your mouth because otherwise <laughs> you, you, you give it away. So you, you have to, <laughs> you know, you, you start making excuses. Um, and, and one of the ways, um, one of the ways I started is speaking for free. And then what I started to do is I had to convince myself. So okay. I would then I would then send people an invoice with a number on it. And I would say fee waived. 
so that now they weren't getting a free speaker. They were just getting a no charge, a wave, no charge this time. So I'm starting to plant the idea that there's value there. So I had to grow that. And oh, that's really good. And, 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 and so that's one way you have to, you have to say, um, you, you know, if, um, um, whether it's for, it's, you have to remember this value there and you're not charging by the hour. People say you charge how much for an hour speech? No, it's not an hour speech. It's the value of the inspiration. And Many the days before you prepare, if you really want to talk about hour now, right? <laughs> Yeah. So it, it uh, so you have to you have to convince yourself that your value and you have to keep reminding yourself because people will challenge you say what I, I didn't I've never paid that much money in my life. Well, OK, you're not going to get me then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you, what do you said is that like, it was like, wow, yeah, it was absolutely what I struggled with when like, oh, yeah, you know, when we do something for free. We said, okay, because it's already free, so we don't have that kind of, let's say, necessity. We don't raise that necessity to say, I'm going to need to be the in the A game because if I don't charge them, the value of that needs to be 100 times, let's say, 100 times more than not charging. And now, if we charge, then it also needs to multiply that value. So, which means we had to have the commitment to bring the values to the next level. So, I also realized the reason I didn't check at the beginning, also not because of like only the fear, but it also the kind of like, okay, easier to not charge. <laughs> but uh, when you charge, you, you're going to need to pull all our be own in and want to make even free, we do that. but. Yeah, we always had to multiple the value with the currency, I guess. So a very, very interesting thing. And let, let's go back to the audience, right? Maybe they are now working as employee in a business. And maybe not, not everyone needs to find out a career for themselves by quitting a job. Not everyone needs to if they don't feel good. So let's talk about passion in general now, right? How can people do what they do now with the passion evidence? And I am living my life with compassion, with love, with energy, with that passion. So what would be your recommendation? Along the way, on your, your, your life's a journey and you will have uh, many tasks and, 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 and projects and, and, and work to do. And some of them you won't love. However, you can still be good at it in the moment because what you are doing is you are practicing. See, if you can show passion for something that you're not, you're not happy with, you know, it, you know it's temporary. But you are practicing as you practice using your your passion. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an example. Um, years ago, my my son was in uh, my son Christopher was in Air Cadets, and and they did fundraising for the Air Cadets. And the way they did it is they would have a bingo. And in those oh. days, so they would you know they'd make money from bingo, and they would ask the parents to come and and volunteer you know to sell the. Uh, the, the cards and, and, and all the little okay. raffles. So I volunteered to do that to help my son. Now, I don't like bingo, but what I really hate <laughs> is, is cigarette smoke. And in those days, they could smoke in, in, inside the bingo hall. So the place just stunk. It was reeking. So I hated being there. Uh, wow. However, I, I, I said to myself, I'm here to help my, my son in his air cadets. So I will be do the best job I can selling these bingo cards. So I would go around the hall, walk up to people and say, you know, which, you know, are you ready for another card? Do you want to get her? And, and so I worked, um, I, I was, you know, I was going to do the best I can. Now, when I got home, I showered, you know, put my clothes in the wash because they just stunk. <laughs> but, but it was, it was only temporary being there and I had chose to be there for to help my son I hated being there but I still was passionate I still was going to do a good job 
And, and so even if you don't love being there, you can still do a good job because that's you. Wow. Absolutely. So which means the way we do one thing might reflect how we do other things, right? So if we already choose to do it, if we do like half, when we do other things, maybe we do it half. So let's say you already decided that you would be there and have your son. And why did you not enjoy it, right? So I also always made a joke to the people coming in the training, especially when companies send them to, right? I said, okay, well, why are you here? I have to because my company send me. So, but you are already here. So let's make the best out of it because you're already here. So I just love what you share about you did something you didn't like as you thought, but because of something you like, in your case that like you wanted to have your son, then you will be all in. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. And that could be uh, my challenge for uh, the audience. That what would be the thing that you're doing right now? And I'm challenging you that if you already decide to do that, be all in. And maybe one day, you may not do that one anymore and you find a career as Josh did. And uh, my very interesting way of challenging himself to be better at what he thought he was good. <laughs> like speaking, right? So I uh, I am here with some of the questions. So uh, I'm gonna ask one. But before that, let's grab what we talk. We talk about you challenge yourself, your speaking presentation, and wow, wow, you could be better and you wanted to be better every day at that. And step by step, you made it a career by giving values first and developing you with the speaking. And yeah, be all in in what you do. So one question from Chris. What was your fear right now? My fear right now? Or was that in the yeah, past? Yeah, that could be nice. You say, uh, what was your fear at the beginning of the journey? and what is your fear now when you set up a certain like you know brand around a topic um when i started the business certainly one of the fears was was financial you know am i going to have enough money to you know to to feed the family uh that was a concern um but i never I never thought that I wouldn't do enough. I just was afraid that what if people don't like me? What if they don't, you know, if I don't make enough money? Um, my, my fears now, it would be, um, what if, <laughs> um, it goes back to something we were talking at the beginning. What if I, uh, what if I don't get all the things done uh, that I want to do before I die? You know, you know, I, there, there, <laughs> you know, it, it, <laughs> okay, I would say like that kind of excitement, right? Because you better live, you challenge yourself, and you're gonna complete that. But eventually, as you said, if you be all in what you and you, no matter, I believe how long we live, it will be all in in what we do. At the day we leave the planet, we say, okay, I live all in. So I like that idea. So. <laughs> yeah, one another last question because I believe I keep you very long today. What you, will you tell your uh, champion yourself? What is that one thing? What is the one thing I tell myself? Champion at the as champion year, so your younger self. Oh, um. Oh, if I could, if I could tell my younger self, give advice to my younger self, what would that be? Uh, um, do it faster. Uh, be bold. Be bold. Uh, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, <laughs> be bold. Wow, short and sweet. Can you elaborate on that? I'm curious. Um, there, there are. There are ideas that you have that are in, imperfect, and all ideas are imperfect. So there are ideas that I had that I, 
I didn't pursue. And in hindsight, I wish that maybe I did, that I did. And even if they failed, uh, I could have learned from the failures and, and have accomplished more of those uh, objectives, those goals that I wanted to do. Uh, th there are some things that I just delayed for too long. <laughs> because, yeah, being perfect, like trying to be perfect and uh, trying to wait until you, that day, right? That is so true. So you, as you said, like, be bold to take that action even when you feel not ready and then you may fall but forward and then eventually you'll fall forward to where you want to go uh, in a, you know, maybe shorter time and which means you can try even more challenges. So um, I believe that was the last question that I think I said, but I like to ask one last question for myself, from the audience. So normally we will end with saying, what is the one book or one thing or one document or one channel that you think people can check out today after watching you or hearing you? It can be your book or can be something that you inspire you. And if it has inspired you and we are inspired by you now, then maybe we can get inspired from that material. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my, my bookshelf over here and I've got a few hundred books. <laughs> can you turn around the camera so we can see? Yeah. Okay. Oh, give us one. <laughs> um, and there we go. Um, hmm. I, I, I love books and we see if there's one book, um, uh, well, you mentioned Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, it, it is, um, it's a powerful book. It's, it's, t it's a tough book to read. I had to read it three times before, before I, I got it. Uh, but it's, it's a worthwhile book. I, I do recommend it. Um, S Stephen Covey. Uh, here's another book that I read many uh, meant decades ago uh, on, on the topic of communication skills. It's called How to Get Your Point Across in 30 Seconds or Less. Oh. And the author is Milo Frank. And it's an old book. Um, I'm seeing if I can see it here. I can never. Oh, yeah, we, we want to get the physical copy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. I also like to learn about your book. How can people check out your book? Uh, okay. Are you bringing it? Hang on. Um, okay. I have another book recommending you while you're waiting, at least your passion. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there, there's my, my marketing book, Secrets uh -huh. of Power Marketing. Okay. And um, it's, it's on Amazon, um, as well as my, my website, powermarketing.ca, CA for Canada. Uh, oh. this, this book was a bestseller, and it's about personal marketing. Congratulations. Uh, oh, lovely. And, and, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something I learned about writing a book. Um, after you write the book, even though you research and you prepare and you work on the book, after you write the book, that's when you start to learn about the topic. Because now you start to see the world differently because of all the effort that you put into your book. Yep. Mm, lovely. It's kind of like you will create a project about a topic and you need to do the research about the landscape before you put in any kind of additional voice. Very, very great. And uh, yeah, we have your name here so people can also search on that uh, easily on LinkedIn and from there to the website and learn more about your uh, wisdom. So thank you so much. We had a joke that the wise gray hair man uh, in the house. <laughs> and it was very, very interesting conversation that I wanted to even have more. It was 
kind of like I think this is warm up conversation just for today, even more than an, an hour, because I found a lot of elements there about asking questions about how can we actually believe more and what we do and then like value ourselves. So there's more, 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 more things that I like to one day get you back. Uh, so yeah, it was meaningful today and I let you continue your day. And for us is night. So we're gonna good night for ourselves and have a good day to you. And thank you for your wisdom. My pleasure. Good day and good night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you soon. And yeah, don't forget if you are listening to Josh now, check out his LinkedIn and also his book about power of marketing. And that is interesting because in there maybe we can discover even more interesting or powerful power. So have a great night, everyone.